Hi, this is Josh Olson, and you're watching Trailers from Hell. And today we're going to take on the issue of global warming with Val Guest's The Day the Earth Caught Fire. The time is now 10.41, 19 minutes before countdown. This is actually one of two movies to come out in 1961 that use global warming as their uh, at least inciting incident. The other was uh, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, in which the Van Allen belt caught fire. This is a wonderful film. It's, I, I want to say it's cerebral. I don't want to scare you away from it. It's very smart, very funny, and it's beautifully written. Val Guest, uh, who co-wrote the script and directed the film, had done some time as a journalist, so the newsroom scenes have a real kind of authenticity to them, and he used a lot of real newsmen in some parts and certainly did his research. The basic premise is that the two nuclear explosions have been set off on opposite sides of the world and uh, the planet has shifted its rotation and we are now moving close to the sun. Uh, Leo McKern plays a supporting part as a great newsman who sort of explains everything that we and the lead, played by Edward Judd, are probably too dumb to understand. Right here, uh, this is obviously the American trailer. He, he uses the word bungler as the actual line. Uh, I guess they're trying to protect our uh, tender American ears from hearing the word bastards in 1961. Guest wrote the script with Wolf Mankiewicz and they won the BAFTA for it, I think deservedly so. It's just got some really sharp dialogue. And the film has this uh, incredible feel, this real sense of impending doom to it. It really does, it follows a journalist as he slowly unearths the story and starts to realize what's happening to the planet as we get closer and closer to our potential doom. The question is whether or not we'll be able to save ourselves. None of the characters have any direct input in that, so they're sort of, like us, left to kind of hope and pray that uh, mankind will save itself. It has a real kind of documentary feel to it, which gives it a real edge and, and adds to the, the kind of creeping suspense of the thing. It opens and closes with uh, an orange gel that really does actually, it looks, you think it might be kind of cheesy, but it does actually kind of give you the sense of tremendous heat. As you can see here, the characters are sweating profusely throughout most of the film. That's Janet Monroe there in the middle. Lovely young actress. She had mostly done Disney films up to that point. This was her first quote-unquote adult role, and she spends a good deal of it uh, running around in very little uh, clothing and a towel. The film also features beatniks, which is always a good thing. If you blink, you might miss Michael Caine in one of his very earliest roles. He has a small part as a police officer, but if you listen, you'll definitely recognize that unmistakable voice and accent. Four, three, two, one. 